Hello and welcome back! If you follow the channel, you already know that my HP 9825, famously used by Mr. Fancy Pants in the HP catalog, recently died from a power supply failure that caused an overvoltage. The computer died, that is, not Mr. Fancy Pants, whom we found very alive and still very kicking as Keysight's principal metrologist emeritus. Anyhow, the 5 volts became 13 volts, which is a big ouchie if you are a TTL chip. After many adventures and even the help of the original designers, we finally got the 9825 to boot again, but only when we used the keyboard display printer assembly, or KDP as it is known, from another 9825. We attempted to repair the KDP in a previous episode. The board contains a proprietary KDP chip, for which there is no substitute known, so we really hoped this chip had been spared. The board had several dead chips that drew so much current that it brought everything else down, but once we replaced all the chips that had shorted, we were pretty confident it would work again. And instead, we heard that. All right. And that wasn't good news, because the buzzer is directly controlled by the KDP chip. Is our precious chip dead? So before we incriminate our uh, KDP chip further, I wanted to check if it had clock. And it turns out it derived its clock from the main clock. And it's hard to see, but it's the bottom here. And it's 6 MHz and then it's divided by 4. So we get 1.5 and then it gets two phases out of it. So um right on this flip flop to divide by four and uh, here is my six megahertz in from here and it should come out on this uh, on the on the pink trace over here and if i turn it on not only nothing comes out but this thing the level changes so i bet you that flip flop is bad. Okay, so we're, we're getting closer to a good uh, average of bad chips, right? It's four or five. Right now we've found just two, maybe three. So let's change that one. Okay, here it is. LS, actually not LS, 74107 dual flip flop. Found in our database, tested. No good, which is not unexpected. Okay, so I have to find a 107 bad chip. And I have a whole bunch of 107s, but the town tech doesn't like it. They all fail for the same reason. Two pins bad. And these things have leakage. Let me try it on the TL866. Uh, and the town tech doesn't know the 107. So now you have one, one case where None of the testers know that flip-flop chip. Dang, uh, but man, they, they, they must be good. I'm just going to replace them. Okay, try again with the new chip. And a one and a two and yeah, all right. And actually it works. And so I have the divide by four. I still don't have my phase one and phase two and that got me going for a while. The phase one, the phase two being the one that drive the circuit. But it turns out it comes through an amplifier IC that's an analog thingy. So it needs plus 12 volts to it, which is this guy over here. So when I get even plus 12 volts, magically my clock appears. So. Uh, I think I can drive the board entirely uh, with the minus 5, plus 5 and plus 12 volts. The minus 20, plus 20 are just for the printer. And I think with that I should have keyboard scanning. I think the display scanning requires intervention from the processor, but the keyboard scanning should go on its own all the time. So, let me see. This is... Plus five, minus five, plus 12. And it's book book. Oh yeah, I see it. So I have scanning. There we go. So we definitely have some scanning happening at different frequencies. So that's pretty good. So maybe the, the 
Kitty B. Chip is not dead. It's getting warm a little bit, so it's definitely doing something. All right, so let's try it in the machine where the processor can talk to it and see if it boosts or something. So back on the 9025, we are now changed five ICs, so we're coming up on our quota here. Is that going to be enough? And no. Aww. Nope, 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 nope. So at this point, I think the KDP chip must really be bad. <sighs> and the one way to know is to uh, put the KDP chip in the good keyboard and to see if it works or not. Okay, this is our, our a good keyboard and I just put the uh, suspect KDP chip from the other dead keyboard and see if that does it. Yes, it works. Oh, that's good news. So the KDP chip is good. I just haven't uh, restored enough TTL in the other keyboard. Ooh, excellent. Okay, so let's work more on the board and see what could go wrong with the display. Okay, well, that's a giant piece of good news. This appears to work. I'm suspecting all this is right. No, this could be bad, uh, but at least on the way there, it's good. We know the oscillator is good now. The bell is good. Um, we changed that gate. And here is the display stuff. Uh, so that gate went bad, so maybe it could have driven some of these bad. Um, so we have some run of the mill gates, an inverter, and a decoder. And how is the data coming out? Uh, data is coming out here, this gate. And there's only three circuits, so just pick them all up and test them, see what happens. So here are the external chips involved in a display. And most tested good. Uh, so those three are good, and but this one is bad as the, the 7408. And that was the one that was driving the pixel data on the LED, so definitely that would kill the display. Uh, I have a new one of the dead one and I also have a new one of the one that tests good, uh, not that one, so I'll, while they are out, I'll put some new ones, those have been stressed definitely, but I don't have a new one of this one, so it goes back. And by the way, this is why I don't like to test circuit at random, right, I broke a capacitor, so it causes a lot of damage when you start pulling good circuits out for no good reason, but in this case I had no good way to test, so that was the easiest way out. Okay, it's getting late. I hope this works this time. So we changed the 7408, which is the only bad circuit in the display, but was driving data. So let's see if that works. And it does not. Huh. So there's not much else. At least it's not completely dead if I do beep, it beeps. So I can put a little program to test, beep, wait 2000, beep, wait 2000, beep. I should have three beeps. All right, it works. I must, I must have not have zero coming in the last one. But so the machine is running. It's just not displaying. Hoo hoo! Uh, there's a couple of ancillary chips that could still. There's a gate or two that I haven't tested that could be blocking the display, or the LEDs might be bad. I haven't thought about that one. So I think we are very close. It's booting up. It's wanting to dis is wanting to display something, but nothing comes out of the display. So uh, I'm trying to figure out if it's actually sending data to the display. And the two pins that are of importance are 
dot clock and dot data. It's what's basically sending the stuff out to the display. So I'm all pro on the KDP chip down there. I have my stuff with the stack. And this is clock, this is dot clock, and this dot data. And I have data, it's trying to display something. And I'm going to press a few keys on the keyboard. And you see the data has changed, it's displaying a B now. And then the one more thing that we need to check, each digit has five column of dots and it does one, it does refresh one column at a time from zero to its four. So this should just ripple through. If that's coming out and that's coming out, then it's just that the display is bad and not responding. I move my probe from data to S0 to see if a column is selected. That's my red one. And sure enough, there it is. So it is perfectly selected. What's going on? So the display should light up at this point, I think. Okay, so maybe it's my display chips that don't work. Or there's a board here that has little displays and those little displays are, uh, are intelligent. You load them do dot by dot. Uh, so there's a shift register in there. Maybe that's blue. So I've convinced myself that the display should light up, but it doesn't. So I took the uh, display portion from the good display and it's, it's easy to remove, fortunately. And all it has is a few driver transistors and uh, the display themselves are the smart ones. They, they, uh, you load them with dots uh, in serial fashion and it arranges them around. So it has a shift register in them. So I tested the transistors in the board they look okay so i think it's, it's the chips and for that i have to take one chip uh, from the good board make sure i make a little test setup to test it see if it works and then i pick a chip from the bad board and confirm that it's dead and then i have to find new chips which is not going to be easy so I have taken one good chip out of the good display board and made a little tester, ignore this, that's from the previous episode where we were testing the Intel uh, memory controller chip. It has a clock, then you load the bits 28 at a time, and then you light the row that you have just loaded and then you do the same for the uh, other sequence, uh, the other row. So right now I am giving it a constant clock of uh, let's do one hertz, and uh, I'm giving it all one. So if I do a column, it should be all that it is. Then you have the other column, the third column. Uh, but we should see the uh, shift register working if I inject some zeros in there. There you see, we're loading it. So usually you would load it at six megahertz, not one hertz. And this would be hidden. You wouldn't show anything while you're loading it, right? And then once you have loaded your pattern, you just stop the thing and uh, you show it. But what I'm going to do is get the input wired up to the output because there's also an output of the shift register. So the bits that come out here, they'll come back there. And now, now you see the, the bit pattern. If I go a little faster, it's more fun. Quite second lick actually. I'm just going to take one from the bad board and see if I can light it up in the same way. Okay. Alright, chip from the bad board. Are you a good chip or are you a bad chip? Nothing, nothing, nothing dead. So we have probably eight dead display chips actually we don't know because one display chip might block the whole content for everything right if one is dead it will not pass the data to the other one and this is number one but i bet you they are all dead i'll test them all surprise surprise they are all bad it's not one to save the other all dead I couldn't resist but take a look-see under the microscope. It's such a gorgeous chip. Yeah, come on, focus right there. As you can see here, each chip has four matrices of 5x7 LEDs for four characters. There is a driver IC chip taking care of two arrays each. And this is it with the glass removed. 
This is a hybrid on ceramic that must have cost an absolute fortune to make. It was the first such chip and was developed specifically for the long alphanumeric display line of the 1925, which, uh, which was very novel at the time. It was later made commercially available and became quite popular under the HDSP2000 designation. These display chips are really worth an episode on their own. Yeah, I finally received my replacement display chips. The originals had this tinted window and were glass ceramic. Uh, this is the uh, commercial part made by Siemens. It's a uh, HDSP2000. And uh, they went the cheaper route, of course. They put it on a plastic package uh, and with, I don't know if it's glass or epoxy in the front. And it's not tinted, so you can't see the whole row of uh, LEDs in the two chips. Uh, and I just popped one in my tester. And sure enough, I can get the exposure correct. They do work fine. I just launched a few bits in the uh, shift register. I'll solder them in the HP uh, 1925 display board and hopefully our display will be repaired. Here is the new display with the Siemens chip. I soldered them as straight as I could. I think I did an okay job. I use a straight edge to do it. Okay, remounted the display. So we'll see if it comes back up. And it does. It works. Okay, so we repair that. And I'll check the printer where I'm at it. Okay. It works except the a column there, but that didn't work before, so it's as it was before I got it. This column here never works. I don't know why, because there's nothing specific to it that the the head moves, so it must be something mechanical. But back, delete, execute. All right, it's repaired. TDP is repaired. Okay. So we are 90% there, there's still something that doesn't work, it's the tape um, and the tape board is actually the biggest board of the whole thing so I didn't expect it to work and I tried it and of course it doesn't. Um, so KDP chip lives and next time we uh, work on it we will try our best at uh, reviving the tape drive and then we should be done finally. See you then!